Hello and welcome back to the Vietnam Diorama series. This is the final part in that video series. The diorama is finished and you'll see how I completed this little slice of history. It's been a fun project and I've really enjoyed having the time to make a diorama. We've taken a model from this to this. So let's see what it took to take this project over the line and get it done. In this final instalment in the series, I'll show you all the final finishing touches, extra details and little improvements that were required to get this all done. Without further ado, let's get started. If you saw our recent painting figures faces and flesh video that was in a top 10 tips format, you'll have seen the technique that I used to paint 135th scale figures, especially their flesh tones. This was basically used for the rest of the figures on the diorama. The same technique was deployed, although the colours were slightly different. I started with three basic flesh tones. 70876 brown sand, 70955 flat flesh and 70927 dark flesh, all acrylics from Vallejo. They were mixed up in different quantities and applied thinly all over the figures. You can change the ratios to get variety in skin tones. When you have a bare chested figure it's more challenging but the same basic principles apply. As you can see over the black base coat, the paint is just thinly painted on. As shown in the previous video on this, you don't want to get coverage completely the first time. You want to build up subtle, thin shades. Now it's time for the uniforms. Three green shades were selected from Vallejo. These would form the basis of all the different US Army uniforms. The colours chosen were 70830 German Field Grey, 70922 Uniform Green and 70920 German Uniform. I also raided the Andrea Colour Field Grey set ACS010 for additional green shades. Again these were mixed up and varied in all sorts of different mixes to get variations in green and they were applied all over the US Army uniforms worn by the crew. Next the eyes. These were picked out in an off-white shade from Andrea Colors white set, ACS003. Just be patient and use a thin brush and try and pick out all the whites of the eyes on all the figures. As you can see, the key to painting figures for a diorama is to try to paint as many as possible in one go. It helps to put them on some sort of holding piece, in this case you can see both polystyrene and clear plastic acrylic. That enables you just to handle the figures very easily and paint them all quickly in succession. For the Vietnamese civilian, I used the blue paint set from Andrea, ACS005, and mixed up different variants by adding flesh to lighten the blues for the top. Again, it's just painted on thinly and allowed to dry before re-coating. For all these straw hats, that was painted using a mixture of Panzer Aces Splinter 70345 and various other shades in the sandy colour range like Vallejo Dark Sand. When you paint a white colour, you need to bear in mind that it might need multiple coats. 
to get good coverage and good opacity. Here you can see the civilian figures and how they're progressing. Notice that the flesh hasn't received any additional paint yet. Having painted the whites of the eyes, it's time to paint the coloured parts, the iris. This was done again with a very fine brush and a dark, very dark brown shade. And you can see me there just very carefully painting them in. And it can be approximate at this stage as the face hasn't been finished. You've got plenty of scope to tidy up any mistakes. So you just try and get them all aligned and the direction of the gaze looking good without worrying too much about how precise it is. And it really brings the characters to life. I particularly like the sideways glance on the uh, cart driver. Okay, so additional details like boots and uh, parts of the helmet and so on, and eyebrows and hair can be painted. Before moving on to what I'd call the flesh highlights, this was done by basically taking whatever the base mix of flesh was for each figure and lightening it with basic flesh tone by Vallejo 70815. You'll notice that the wet palette in the background keeps the paints fresh so it's easy to find your original mix and lighten it. As shown in the tutorial how to video it's a case of blending the paints once they've gone on using a thick flat brush. If you want to know more about that then I suggest you watch the video which shows it in great detail. The overall effect is to get highlights that are subtly blended into the darker shades of the previous coat. When you're painting a bare chested figure it's just a case of picking out all the raised relief detail like muscles in the highlight colour and then blending. And here you can see the figures and how they're progressing. The highlights are then taken a stage further with yet more basic flesh tone and yet more blending. This is reserved for the areas of maximum highlight, like the top of the shoulders, top of the arms, nose ridge, eyebrows, that sort of thing. As you can see, blitzing the figures all in one go speeds up the process, and also you can see how they all interact with each other and what the appearance is. Okay, so it's time to add a bit of weathering to the figures, or to make them look a bit more dirty really, as if they're part of the environment. As you can see, a light mix can be applied to metal objects like the helmet and then blended, and that gives a really cool sort of worn, scratched effect, just on the top of the helmet. Any additional details can be picked out, but what's needed now is a bit of dirt on the uh, clothes and uniforms and boots and so on. For that, Light Colours PG106 Damp Dirt Pigment was chosen. You can also add scratches and further highlights to things like the flak jacket, again adding to the sense of weathering or use of uniforms and the kind of abuse they would get used in the field. Things like knee pads and where the, where the knees would touch the ground can be very dirty. If you look at period photos from Vietnam, you can see that the uniforms got really quite dirty in the field. Everything's sealed down with uh, my favourite varnish, Vallejo Matte Varnish. There we can see the assortment of figures. The cart, meanwhile, as pointed out by various comments in previous videos, yes, it did need um, additional mud, and that was all planned, dust and mud. And for that, the same pigment colour, damp earth, was applied using a little bit of Deluxe Materials Scenery Glue, and it was just dabbed into there, 
so it would dry wet, but it was also applied dry just with a flat brush, as you can see here, to show residual mud and dust. Time now to start populating the diorama and seeing how everything works. But first our egg cab needs some finishing touches and for that it needs stowage on top. My preferred way of doing stowage is to stick them all on a piece of card using double sided tape. I may end up with more stuff than I actually use but this is way quicker. Then I'll just blast them with various greens or whatever the base shade should be, making sure there's variety. And one little detail that's easy to overlook is all the stenciling you get on ammo cans and so on. And these are stencils by Archer Fine Transfers. They're wet transfers with stenciling. And so it's a case of applying in the usual fashion, but they add a real touch of realism. It is probably worth researching where the stenciling would go on ammo cans. I can't remember if I did research it or not, but I just kind of stuck them on. And I chose what looked good to me. These are dry transfers from Verlinden and Archerfine Transfers makes a special paper. You can rub the dry transfers onto that and it becomes a, a decal in effect or a decal. That's exactly what's happening here. So some nice white stenciling that I've only found in the old Verlinden set was rubbed down onto that paper and then gently removed just to add a bit of stenciling over some of the boxes. Here you can see the overall effect. Just raises the realism a bit. And of course lots of little accessories like these Verlinden items were painted up, ready to be applied. The cart driver got a uh, plastic sprue whip for the oxen. And then it was a case of making everything look a bit dusty, otherwise it was just too clean. If it's going to be on the top of the vehicle it's going to be dirty and dusty. Liquid Pigments from Life Colour, their Rain and Dust set, LP03, was used. This is a real favourite of mine. These are great to use. You apply them and then using the liquid remover you can remove them. And they're a bit like oils and they give a really realistic dusty finish. They're really excellent. And then it was time for a bit of contrast using MIG Productions old staple, their dark wash, applied just to accentuate some of the surface and recess details around things like the ammo cans. As you can see everything's taking shape quite nicely, we've got our accessories ready. The tracks of course needed to be applied and that was something I broke down into stages because it was just so tedious to do, but their single link tracks they were applied, glued, everything was filled, and they were sprayed with enamels. That way it was easy to remove any overspray. Time to fit all these extra accessories which were removed from the sheet and then applied with white glue. They were strapped down using the Infini Models cutting mats. They were used to cut down pieces of masking tape which were applied as straps or tie downs. Using Wilder's Murky Water and Humbrol's chocolate and black mixed together, a dark sort of watery mix was made up and applied at low pressure, stippled over the model or sprayed to show moisture. The whole idea of this diorama is that it's kind of, I was thinking of calling it after the rains and the idea is that there's a bit of moisture in the environment but it's starting to dry out so there's a mixture of kind of mud and dry air. As you can see it can be quite easily replicated using this mixture. It was also applied of course to the diorama, so the two marry up over the tracks and so on. Again this is just the murky water mix. Murky water is simply a high gloss varnish, nothing more than that. You could use a gloss varnish and it would work fine. This is the original Wilder earth mix that was used all over the model. And what I'm doing here is I'm preparing it so that when the model is seated on it that there's no visible gap. And the only way I could do that was to apply more of the same earth mix and sort of squish the tracks into it. I'd already prepared gaps and contours in the track when I 
moulded it using epoxy sculpt but still it didn't quite sit right. So this creates a little bit of a filler. As it's water based I, I actually really like these ground diorama products because they're water based so they're very easy to manipulate. And you can see me there just going over it with a flat brush making sure everything is blended in. Any excess can be removed with water so it doesn't look too overdone. And finally I went over it with a uh, carving tool just to blend everything further. Time for more of the shiny mix which was sprayed just to tie the boundary of the grass and the earth together. Just applied with an airbrush but you could apply it with a brush as well and you can create streaks too. That's a really nice effect to show kind of water runoff. And there's that dark mix. Time now to add yet more water using a product called Solid Water from Deluxe Materials. It's two part resin, you mix it together and then it's kind of pourable and that's exactly what I did. I just poured it into the little gutter I created when I first designed the diorama and gently just allow it to kind of trickle down it. You can apply a spatula just to kind of guide it into the areas you want. The only thing I'd say with this product is it did take a long time to dry. It's very, very glossy. It did take longer than it said on the bottle to actually dry and harden. And also once it's on, I don't really know how to remove it. So you have to make sure you don't kind of spill it or make any mistakes. The same product was also dabbed on around the tracks to add further areas of high gloss. Overall I'm really pleased with it. I think uh, less is more when it comes to water products. You want to give a hint of water but not too much. Finally a Jay's diorama produced these paper plants I ordered from Australia and they took I think three or four months to arrive during the lockdown but I'm really pleased with them. You basically cut them out, roll them up and drill a hole and stick them in. They also do leaves that you can cut out and carefully stick to something like wire or sprue. As you can see I tweaked some of the vegetation as well and just adjusted it. Finally I wanted to add a bit of colour and I long had the idea of a sort of lilo or an inflatable mattress that I wanted to put somewhere on the diorama so that was painted up. And the oxen also got all the sort of rigging and whatever ropes and so on and that was all applied, painted and then weathered using pigments so it looked a bit more realistic and dirty. Any final details were picked out and here you can see the effect. This figure in the end I decided not to add it to the diorama. It felt like it was too much and this feels a bit more balanced to me. I don't know, let me know in your comments. There are obviously things I'll change and tweak but I'm calling this done now because it's time to move on. I mean little things like it would be nice to have done more detail in the A cav, maybe to have straightened the wheels on the cart which I'll do at some point because they're a bit wonky but I kind of like that. Makes it look very rickety. Overall though I'm really pleased. It was so enjoyable to do this. I wish I could just spend more time doing dioramas but what with the needs of the channel and everyday life it's pretty hard. Until the next time, bye.
subscribe for our latest videos.